In this episode, Jeb and Bob join Verbery and Bill on Curbin Station. Our newest pilot goes to flight school, and I decide to give this VTOL another try. All of this and much more is coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome. We are back here with the Duna 1, which is on a trajectory set for Duna. You can see we are quite a ways from Kerbin. There's Kerbin way back there. In fact, we are maybe about 25 minutes away from exiting Kerbin's SOI. So I just want to do that. And then we will check on our trajectory. There's the alarm that we are about to leave. And we'll check on our trajectory and uh, probably set up a correction burn. Now that one's going to be quite a ways in the future there. We have just crossed over. We are now orbiting the sun. Let's take a look at our approach to Duna here. It says Ike. I don't know why. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Nice, nice, nice. So... Focus view and do Okay, so the correction burn is going to be somewhere out here mid course. That's always sort of your best idea for doing correction burns. And we'll set up. Man, that maneuver node is huge. <laughs> we'll put a couple maneuver node evolve windows there and we'll just sort of see. So I definitely want to bring my trajectory up into the equatorial plane, so we're in the same plane as Ike, so that's going to be a little bit of a normal adjust. Well, that was one meter per second. <laughs> and let's, uh, you see, this is not gonna be a large correction. Let's change that time adjustment. We're going by the hour now. Okay, that's making so little. I just wanna get an approximate idea of what's the, ah, bah, 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 bah. Here, let's go up one more meter per second. This will help. There we are. So we're way up here. And so now what I want to do is just... The bigger this gets, the more effect I'm getting from the burn. So I'm going to move this till it's as big as it can be. Oh my god, I was pretty close to the right spot. I should have just left well enough alone. Now the other thing I might want to take a look at... Whoa. Put that to the hundredth of a meter per second, not that I'll be able to burn that. There we go. Is I want to sweep left and right to cross the orbit here, see if I can find myself an Ike encounter. Because sometimes you can use Ike to slow yourself down, get a bit of a gravity assist. So that's going to be with a radial. So I'm just going to sweep one way, then the other, and see if during this we are in the right plane, right? Yeah, we are. Ike is quite the beastly moon. There we are. So here we're encountering Ike. Let's focus on Ike. And we are encountering Ike before we get to Duna, which is what's important. Now this doesn't always work. And it can be kind of deceptive because I'm not, I'm encountering Ike out here somewhere, not where it is right now. This is not at all really slow. How close can I get to Ike? It's still pretty freaking close. I think Ike is just in a bad spot for me to make this work. It's because I'm encountering it out here, so when I go by. If I go by in a retrograde direction, which I am here, it's kind of kicking me out that way. If I come around the other way, it's going to accelerate. Now this isn't going to work. So we're going to put this back. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it for now. Probably any other adjustments we'll make into uh, once we're in Duna's SOI. So, okay, let's get back. And that burn is coming, oh, it's only a tiny little burn, 1.2 meters per second, but it's in 78 days. Now, some of you might be wondering, you know, I'm only in what now? We're on day two, well, I can see it here, what day am I at? I'm on day 278 of this entire campaign. So, like, 
oh my gosh, it's going to be episodes and episodes before he gets to day 78 days from now. No, I do plan on starting to speed up time. I'm going to do less in the Kerbin system and spend more time out here. So I'm hoping this will only take a few episodes to get to this burn and maybe like a couple more episodes to get to our actual encounter in Duna. So I'm going to start trying to skip ahead a little bit further, more quickly in time so that we can get this mission over with in relatively short order but what I really need to do is I need to upgrade my tracking station. This tier 2 tracking station can't reach out to those crappy antennas I have there but to upgrade this I need 844,500 curb bucks and right now I have 242,000 curb bucks so yeah I got some money to raise but I do have 78 days to do it so uh well, let's launch something. And we are off in the Palm 1, and despite this being actually a three crewed vessel, I only have two crew, Jebediah and Bomb. Uh, I do have Mad Me available, but Mad Me is required for that redo of that Kerpalo mission, which looks like will be the highlight of the next episode. And Jeb and Bob are going to be, well, some guinea pigs for us. We have this experiment to do uh, called the Float Experiment. And this is going to be occurring at Kerbin Station. We brought up the module for that experiment last episode. But it requires four Kerbals in order to run the experiment. And Bill and Verbri, I believe, are up there right now. So Jeb and Bob are going to be joining them. Just notice it's going to be a... Uh, reunion of the original three purposes. and they're gonna be stuck up there unfortunately for a while because I think it takes a while for that float experiment to perform but I'm hoping that it'll be a nice little steady source of science for me if all goes well I thought take advantage of one of those radial docking ports I don't know about you but a smidge of asymmetry in a vessel always makes things look, I think, just a little bit cooler. There's a reason why the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon is just to one side. Beautiful! Actually, what I should do with all of this asymmetry is turn off the reaction wheels that are hiding in here somewhere. Is that them? Or just actually turn them all off right now. <laughs> this is getting a little bit... Uh, that's a supply caner. There should be reaction wheels. There's a probe body. Maybe that's all there is. Uh, toggle torque, toggle torque, toggle torque. That might be all there is. I think it is all there is. Okay, let's put this back on. When you have reaction wheels that are perpendicular to each other, station... Things don't actually... They don't like that. They start to get into fights over which way the vessel should be oriented. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to... Which one's the float one? It's this one, the closer one. So we need to transfer our crew. Minimum volume 50 cubic meters. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What? Minimum volume per Q is 50 cubic meters. So you need more... Oh my gosh, I need more volume, I think. I definitely need more volume. This is not big enough. Oh, I thought I could cram them all in here. I didn't know. Ah, la, la, la. So I need to add. How much more do I need to add? I gotta look into that. Shoot. 50 cubic meters per crew. I have four crews, so obviously that's gotta be 200 cubic meters of space. How much space is in a hitchhiker can? It should pro has to say here somewhere. This just describes each experiment. Of course, I completely muffed, missed the float that it requires that minimum of, there it is, 50 cubic meters per crew. Here it is. Oh my god, it's 9.81 cubic meters. And after a quick bit of math, I realize that that requires the addition of 18 additional hitchhiker cans. That's not good. <laughs> I'll have to put that on hold. Alright, so that experiment's not going to be done for a long time. But should I just leave those four up there? No, I should get back up. Uh, let's get back up there and bring some of them down. I'm short for crew. Doesn't make sense to leave people up there for no reason. Okay, let's bring Verbri down. And Bob will come down. Jeb will stay up with Bill. 
And after this, I wanted to do something constructive. So what I did is I got into the VAB, started designing some new missions. One of these missions you're gonna see actually towards the end of this episode, it is the missions to collect materials bays and goose samples. And in Kerbalism, these are samples and they need to be returned back to Kerbin. So I designed missions that are just gonna do this with probes rather than having Kerbals flying around because I've been getting a little bit frustrated <laughs> with dealing with all of that stuff and Kerbalism at the same time. And the one that you're going to see later is designed to go into Kerbin's low space and then high space and then come back down to the surface. And the one you see me building here now is designed to go to the moon, including landing on the surface, collect everything it needs to do, and then come on back. Though so don't get too attached to this design because I completely revamped it and you'll be seeing that in a near future episode. Now what I want to talk about right now is actually me testing the booster because, uh, well, this booster here, this is the Kodiak. 1-RS3. It's a booster you have seen before a couple of times. It has performed dependably for me. But as you see here, after the radial booster separation... All right. Oh, 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 it's pitching down. It's pi Oh, it's losing it. Oh, no. There's no gimbling on that Kodiak engine. And I think the only reaction wheels I have is up there in the actual lander. No, 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 this won't do. And I was thinking at first that, oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna have to put on bigger fins. Even though this is high in the atmosphere, big fins might not be really very helpful. And then I remembered that a recent tech unlock gave me the RV-1 Cub Vernier engine. These are highly gimbaled engines that are specifically for eulage rockets that that help you steer vessels well just like this one so i slapped on three of those okay there they go yeah yeah perfectly steady now awesome and in fact a later refinement took off those small tail fins at the end they're now completely unnecessary and with that i still got one other new thing i want to show you with this rocket I did install another mod. This is called uh, the Coupler Shroud, I believe is the name of it. It was recommended by a viewer. So right now, this is a 1.25 meter decoupler and it's connecting to a Terrier engine with uh, and then a 1.875 meter part above it. And this is the default shroud that it has. This gives you some extra shroud options which i actually really really like so if i go in here and i click to disable this shroud it automatically puts in its own sort of little here let me take the mouse away so you can see it put its own little look at it defaulted this noticing oh my gosh there's a 1.875 meter part why don't we make that look nice moreover you can uh change the look whoa whoa Oh, I'm clicking on the service bay. <laughs> that makes sense. You can change it to various different texture. Let's zoom out. Move this away so you can. There we go. You can change just the different kinds of textures. Uh, I kind of like the dark one here because it kind of matches the dark that's already there. I believe so. Even have the Saturn V type of coloring if that's the motif you're gonna go for but I think I'll go with this dark one um, you can change the jettison mode to stay which means that this will actually stay there uh, this cowling will be on here still and the engine will just after you stage which actually I think most of the time looks kind of nicer you can also have it breaking off in a number of shells if that's what you want but I think I am gonna have that to stay and you can right now it's automatically deciding upon the size but you can see here you have all kinds of options to adjust um, the thickness at the top at the bottom so like for instance if for whatever reason I didn't want it to do that match I could bring this down put it back up because I kind of like what it was so gives you all kinds of power to make your rock I think that suddenly looks a heck of a lot nicer there that little transition between this booster stage and the rest of the rocket anyway you'll be seeing this thing oh in a future episode in the not too distant future when it flies but I just wanted to show you that one new thing 
All right, so this is the mobile sample store. You might have remember this from last episode. And it was trying to get around. There's some sort of funky glitch between Kerbalism and Kerbal construction time that's really making it challenging for me to collect surface samples. So I'm just going to look. There were surface samples. Are they still in there? Oh, I guess I can look at the data. That's the way to look at They are not. Okay, so my surface samples from the Badlands and from... Where else did I go? Oh, they're from Highlands, too. I had surface samples from the Badlands and from the Highlands. They seem to have vanished. They went poof into the air. I'm not flying to the Badlands again. I think I might just kind of get into editing the save file and give me the science from that because I think that's fair. <laughs> I went and I collected that science and somehow it has just vanished. We're once again just going to take this. We're going to park it off to the side. And I am going to try to head off to... I believe it's the Southern Ice Shelf. So I'm going to go to the Southern Ice Shelf. See if we can make this work. And you can see aboard we have Colonel Valley Kerman. And he is going to try and succeed where previous pilots have failed and pick up that elusive surface sample. Oh, 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 we are here. We are over that southern ice shelf. We're gonna first have to circle around for a bit to collect that flying low science that's available. And we're gonna put this down onto the surface. And he's gonna pick up that surface sample, but of course all of this stuff has never been where the issue was. The issue is can we get back home? Well, not can we get back home, but once we are back home, can we get that surface sample science into our coffers? Now, it has been recommended that I try just taking the surface sample out of the cockpit. So now Valley should have it. Let's get him right down on the surface. And then just try recovering the Kerbal. We'll see how this works. All right, so recover, just completely bypass this guy. All right, uh, science, science, S uh, surface sample from Kerbin Southern Ice Shelf. Oh, that's got me excited. Let's see. It shouldn't be that excited because it shouldn't be that hard, but. <laughs> surface samples I I won't believe it till I see it here in the archive southern ice shelf there it is all right so I'm gonna edit in for me the highlands and the badlands because as far as I'm concerned I've got that mountains is fair enough and the water I don't think you can get surface samples from the water anymore so I think I'm done with this <laughs> so we'll recover those two vessels using Kerbal construction time and kind of put these kind of missions to bed Okay, the contract is set for the Weasley M1, but then I realized that the Weasley M1 does not have a second seat, and an important part of this was to bring along a passenger. You see, well, Colonel Themon is going to flight school. This is a contract from the Giving Aircraft Purpose. No, it's not. It is from Kerbal Academy. <laughs> that is, of course, where it's from, where we need to have both Valentina and Themon on board, and Val we need to go through a training course, which means flying by a number of waypoints, and then Themon is gonna get a pile of experience. So why don't we do this thing? So lights are on. We now have our rescue seaplane all lit up, though it is not going to be doing a rescue. <laughs> but it is here because it has the extra seat. Okay, and throttle up and view to chase. Brakes off, and then I'm assuming do we, let's open up Waypoint Manager here. Uh, training course start point. T -t training course start. There we are, we gotta turn around. Okay, that's cool, all right. Uh, and hopefully none of this is very far away because I really don't have much of an idea what kind of range this thing has. You know, I'm just realizing not even 20 minutes into this video and this is our fourth mission and we had some time to talk in the VAB man talk about value all right You're up. and let's turn around oh 
normally I do kind of this half roll thing. Oh no, we don't have to turn 90 degrees. So, there it is. Now, uh, yeah, it's just got to hit that waypoint. So, here we go, and then I guess we'll get the next waypoint and figure this out as we go. Not entirely sure where all the waypoints are. I'm hoping they aren't very far away. Oh, this is in meters, not in kilometers. <laughs> this is about a kilometer away. Oh, here we go. Fly the course. I'll give you a medal. I like medals. Okay, so fly to the first waypoint. First waypoint. Uh, heading of 20. Oh, gotta go north. Slow down, slow down. Four kilometers away, I can deal with four kilometers away. First go, way to go, go for the second, second waypoint, second waypoint, second waypoint, second waypoint is bearing, what a, what a, what a, oh my, oh my god, heading to second waypoint. Oh, no, heading, 100 degrees, this, oh, other way, other way, other way, other way. <laughs> We're going east. And I'm hoping this means he's like when he says metal, I hope he was talking figuratively. I don't care about metals. I want experience. Oh, I, just one more to go. Go for the third waypoint. Is this the third waypoint? No, this isn't. That's the second one blowing by us. Where's the third one? It's below us. <laughs> dive, dive. There's the final waypoint. I just I was looking for third waypoint on this list, and it's final waypoint. Okay. <laughs> Demon is getting. School here. Excellent. Just bring her home and the medal will be waiting for you. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I guess that's contract complete. Even though we can crash if we want to. Oh, I guess we need some engine -y engines. Where is our runway? There we are. I really like this contract. Yeah, Femon, of course, is our newest Kerbal. We picked him up just last episode, but now he gets to benefit from the experience of his predecessors. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. No, bail, bail, bail. Bail, bail, bail. Try this one. Bail, bail. Put her down, bail. There we go. This is such a wonky thing. But we can recover it using the feature that's built into Kerbal Construction Time. Which will have this thing turn around in a matter of minutes rather than a matter of days. Woo! Colonel Themon is now level 1. Got it. 3 experience for that. Nice. Those are the kind of medals that I like. What I also like is that my last couple of jet missions, I've recovered the vessel using the recover vessel feature that's built into Kerbal Construction Time, which means that they turn around really quickly, and that frees up construction base space, well, for this not ready for prime time veto that I've been working on and working on and keep pushing back. But I could take a look at this. Yes, I could. Yeah, my history with VTOLs in this campaign is... Well, it's varied, isn't it? <laughs> Let's put it that way. I mean, I've had my share of successes with them, but I've certainly had my share of... Well, let's just say not quite successful. <laughs> Now this thing is not ready. I just got bored of playing with it and decided to build what I had. But you know what, what we'll do is we'll let it finish being built and then we'll go into Kerbal Construction Time and use the edit feature to see if we can modify it and get it to work a little bit better for us. Now as you can see, I've switched up to the Weasley engines. And the reason I did that is because this thing had trouble generating enough thrust to stay aloft uh, when we got up to the altitude of those mountain tops where the air is so much thinner so I went with the Weasleys to give it more thrust the problem that presented is the mass of the Weasleys made it kind of unstable as you started to tilt back and forth I tried to resolve that 
by lifting up the engines as you can see in an effort to get the center of thrust to be higher than the center of mass i was hoping this would give it sort of a pendulum kind of effect and have it be more stable the problem is is that the mass of those weasley engines just overpowers everything else i couldn't get the thrust to be higher than the center of mass and then the thought occurred to me why don't i go back to those juno engines i had before and to fix my thrust issues just go with six of them rather than four of them. And as you see me playing with this, uh, you might be noticing as well that the vessel is more symmetric than it was before. I always had the fuel can symmetric. This is really important on a, on a craft like this one that it drains the fuel equally so the center of mass doesn't move around. But I didn't have the seating for the Kerbal symmetric. So now I have seating on both the front and the back of the cockpit so that when I rescue a couple of Kerbals, I can put one at the back and one at the front and hopefully balance that mass a little bit more effectively. And it's really important to try and get the center of thrust and the center of mass to line up. And what I'm using here is Kerbal Engineer, and I'm specifically looking at the torque feature and turning that engine sort of forward and backwards. The middle engine is the one I'm using to fine tune this to get that torque as low as it can be. I also positioned it in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the ladder from the cockpit so that the pilot can still get in and out. I figured that was kind of an important feature as well. I got to a point where I thought, you know, this doesn't look bad. I think it's worthwhile giving her a test and seeing how she flies. So I got out simulation mode, decided to give this a go. Now I am using, it's been a while since I talked about this script, a KOS script called Hover which allows me to use action groups to really what it does is it precisely controls what my thrust to weight ratio is. And it compensates for the attitude of the vessel as I tilt the vessel whatever way I want. Um, it will increase the thrust accordingly and it also will adjust the thrust according to altitude as well as the air gets thinner. So that's really, really helpful. It doesn't take into account that the engines take time to spool up and down, which is always challenging thing about flying something that is like this but right now I don't know this thing is performing all right I think it's doing fairly well I mean it got up to a six kilometer altitude and was able to hover there that's what it's going to need to do in order to rescue those people from the mountaintops which is the whole idea of this thing is the whole thing I want to use it for I will admit that the thrust was pretty much at maximum at that altitude but it was holding, though, to be honest, this margin's a little bit too fine for me, I don't quite. Yeah, so what I did to sort of fix this part, I don't think this thing's going to have any trouble with range, so I took the fuel out of those middle tanks, above those middle Juno engines, um, and then rebalanced the thrust once again, but then that reduced the mass, which made it much easier to hold altitude at, or hold the altitude at six kilometers which is what this thing is going to need to do. And then, well, with that sort of accomplished and me feeling fairly good about myself, I thought I would get myself a little bit more ambitious. Even though I'm spending money I probably shouldn't be spending on this simulation, well, that helipad that's on top of the vehicle assembly building, it's just way too tempting to pass off. So off we go. And while you're watching me doing this, I do want to welcome aboard my newest patron, Flyboy Utah. Thank you very much, Flyboy. Your donation is appreciated. And if you're interested in donating as well, one of the perks that you do get is access to craft files such as this one, as well as access to my KOS scripts. Man, it is hard to see through this. Ex oh, we gotta come this way. Okay, because, oh, 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 no, 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 oh, jeez, no, no, oh, oh no, I get, oh, wait, I, oh, dear, I killed the throttle by mistake there, too. Oh, we're not coming out of this one. No, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, Madby's still here. Madby, by the way, was, uh, was him, her, or Orlin? <laughs> Even though she's an engineer and Orlin's a scientist, they're all I had available. That's a nice pirouette I have going there. You know what? I'm gonna make my tweaks. I'm gonna call this successful. <laughs> 
and hopefully we'll be seeing this thing fairly soon. It turned out actually it's going to be a very short period of time to do the necessary modifications. See, Mambi's okay. Everything's good. All right, time to move on. There we go, and we are off. And what this is, is this is an attempt at having some struggles, especially with the materials being of late. And I said, I'm going to send a stack of probes and they're gonna go around the Kerbin system and they're gonna collect materials bay and the goo that's left over and bring it back to Kerbin. Remember, those are samples and they need to be returned back to the service for you to get any science out of them whatsoever when it comes to herbalism. So tucked in here is a probe. You'll be seeing it very, very shortly. And it's for getting materials bay from high space and goo from high space and from low space as well. Which I think I had that backward. Materials bay from low and high, goo from high. But either way, it's being lifted on a, a pretty old booster. Uh, this is actually, I think, the first time I did any kind of asparagus staging. What we have down here on the bottom are five of the Valiant engines. These are, um, I think at the time I built this thing, my most powerful liquid fuel engines. Of course, they've got much better ones now kind of like a mini version of the swivel engine. Uh, this was the vessel that lifted up, I think, one of the older LKO ferries, like the Onion 3s, something like that, from a while ago. I'll put a linky link and you'll, I'm sure you'll see it pop up over here. <laughs> if you want to go take a look at the last time this thing was used. As soon as we cross 75 kilometers here, we should be seeing, I believe it would be this top one. There it goes, starting to get going here, collecting our first surface sample. That was handled by a smart part here. There is a smart part right here, uh, and oh, that was the one that do for the high one. See, it's set for 260 kilometers, but there's another smart part down here. Oh, it's got a little red light saying that it had fired. It was set for 75 kilometers to trigger action group number one. Action group number one just did that material space. So this thing is just going to collect until it's done. You might be looking at this and going, wait, we only have one material space. I thought you were gonna go up into high space. I am since a recent tech upgrade uh, has me actually being able to collect two sur uh, surf or materials based samples from the one bay. So it'll be fine, hopefully. I think I've said that before. Uh, Valiant's not a very powerful engine here. This is this central core here is just 0.625 meter parts because you couldn't push anything heavier than that. But it's doing the job here right now program has ended we can stage our booster there we go oh I should point out there's another this is from the decoupler shroud mod see how that uh, shroud cover just stays there I really like that it's nice back to this this thing should be collecting science happily so the plan is it's got um, this will detach the probe core is here. There's my goo. This is the inline goo provided by the restock mod. Um, you know, why don't we... Here, we got some sun. Why don't we take advantage of the sun so we can really get a good look at this while we're collecting. It takes about 20-something minutes for all the uh, surf... or the uh, materials bay to collect. Here, now we can get a better look at this. Okay, so we got a decoupler here. This is coming back down to the surface. And uh, what else do we got? I got batteries in case this thing goes into the dark. It should be able to survive the night while collecting a surface sample, hence why we got a lot of batteries. And this little beastie here is gonna get us up into high space as well. And then we're gonna come back down and hopefully recover all of our science. We'll see how it goes. Oh, 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 we're done. <laughs> Okay, we are done, so we are ready to sort of just point this guy prograde. We should actually turn this off. Let's, uh, materials bay is done, we will turn you off. There we go, and we'll get ready to do the next one again. It is set to go automatically once it's over 260 
kilometers. High space is 250 kilometers. I thought a little bit less than that would be appropriate. All I'm going to do is just point prograde and, and burn here. I think we have ourselves a new engine. This looks like the Spark engine. It is the stock Spark engine, which feels so special for me. It's a great engine for sort of larger probes like this one. Oh, yeah, I go get to that. Oh, oh, oh. Close alarm. Okay, we're good. Noticed all of a sudden I didn't have keyboard controls. Got to get to about 260 kilometers. Shikabunk. No problem. Okay, so this is on its way up to Apoapsis. I was saying this was a bit of a bad design because I suddenly realized I don't need to bring all of this down to the surface. We have those um, science store cartridges things. I could have transported the samples into that, transferred the samples into that, and then just brought that down. It would have been a lot like, eh, it's going to work either way. But for my moon one that I have coming up, probably, well, we'll see when it comes up. Next episode or the one after that, um, I definitely took advantage of that collecting a lot more and it's a very small thing for me to pick up. Okay, why didn't, by the way, this start, this smart part should have, when we're at 260 kilometers during our ascent, you activate action group two. Action group two. Why didn't you do that? You're lazy, you smart part. Aren't I over 260? I guess I'm over, I'm over 260. I don't know. Whatever, it's going now. So we'll stay up here, collecting more, more science. Again, just a reminder to note, you are adding mass. The surface sample is 32 kilograms. The mystery goo is a lot less than that, but you, it does, you know, it, it can be something that can add up that you got to think about. Oh, shoot. You know what? Stop, stop, stop my mistake and it's my mistake because I did not orient this or the solar panels shoot I forgot to do that so the solar panels weren't charging very well and we ran out of electricity we are charging now just barely a little bit but of course the Sun's gonna be going down pretty soon ah We're still collecting though, right? This is still collecting. Is the goo done? The goo might be done. The goo is 100% done, so we can lose that. Oops, just did it twice. There we go. But this has got about nine and a half more minutes. As long as the sun stays up for might be okay maybe well no the sun's gonna go down oh and an eclipse just to add insult to injury and there goes our electricity we ain't gonna make it simply because i forgot to turn the probe what a rock head okay we're gonna stop this we're gonna bring this around to the sunlight again and we're gonna start you again okay now we're good I promise I did plan this appropriately it's my execution that sucks <laughs> let's get this down to the surface should be good go we'll put this on to retrograde no it's got to go prograde for this one that's right because of where I have the heat shield and in case we somehow lose our connection I'm going to pull our arm those parachutes right now there is no antenna no nothing on this Actually, one part I'm just noticing I want to draw attention to is this little construction part. This is the SM-1 uh, stack adapter. A little tiny one going from 0.6, but it looks, look at this beautiful little part. I don't know where it came from. I got a ton of them, though. K 
Okay, now I did test this and it did naturally keep itself oriented the right way. And it seems to be doing it again. <laughs> so that is good news. And when I tested this, the materials bay did get a little toasty. Oh, yeah, launch pads reconditioned. But it seemed to be okay. He says without, yeah, see, so yeah, I'm pretty sure this heat gauge here is on the materials bay. Definitely looks like it. And it was okay on testing. Now I'm honestly really kind of worried. Because we're just beginning our arrow breaking here. Or arrow breaking or descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just lost our signal because of the plasma blackout. That's that's absolutely fine. Yeah. We're dropping below. Temperature here is going down. We're fine. See, I told you it was fine. Was there ever any doubt? Well, if you've watched any number of episodes from this series, you probably know the answer to that question. But this one did recover absolutely fine. And this little expedition netted me 35.6 additional science points. And when I added that to the science points I gave myself for those lost surface samples from earlier in this episode, that gave me a total of over 90 science, which is enough for a new node. But you know, I think... I think I'm going to have to put that off to next episode. Also off to next episode is the Corpolo 2, which I really thought at the beginning of this I was going to get to by the end of this episode, but instead it's going to be starting off next episode. Should be exciting. I hope to see you then.